Hey there and welcome. My name is Chris Barrett and let's start talking about what is going on in the indie tabletop RPG scene. And as always, I'm not being directly sponsored by anyone mentioned here, unless explicitly said or mentioned otherwise. Some links, they may be affiliate links so that they can benefit me without costing you anything extra. And all the links will be in the description together with some timestamps so that you can jump to the point of your preference. This week, we start with Kismet by Cesar Capaco, a creator from RPG Latin, the Latin American tabletop RPG scene. The system proposes a way for you to run your adventure modules for other systems with the use of a single number. You have a single stat, the Kismet. In other words, just use a d20 and ignore the other numbers that are presented in them. Bear in mind that the system was developed in a day and although it is fully playable and ready and functional, it requires some level of abstraction and taking it lightly to make it work. But either way, it sounds like a great system for you to try and you should check it out because it's now each funding, it means crowdfunding on each, offering a tier of only digital copies and another one with print of demand of on cost for the physical version. Another recent release is Diesel and Dinosaurs by Basilisk. It is powered by Charge, like other systems that were presented here and that was were released as part of the Charge Gem that we mentioned on the previous episode. The game is inspired by the animations like Cadillac and Dinosaurs and brings a scenario combining a post-apocalyptic setting and dinosaurs. Humanity has been away in bunkers for some hundreds of years after some climate crisis and the world was recovering during this time. Now that humanity is out again, the world is reclaimed by dinosaurs and other prehistoric creatures. Although the game is ready for use and play as any digitally available game, it is open to be updated. There are some art pieces that are more like placeholders and such, and, and among other edits that can be made, and if you happen to offer, offer some feedback, it would help as well. And by buying the game, you are supporting it to achieve its full potential. So, go check it out. Also, this week, we have Be Seeing You by Tanya Floker that is now finally released. The game is about mass surveillance and all that arrives with it, the control, the compliance, and even the question of freedom. You can play it solo or in a two-player versus mode and requires no dice and no GM. The game still have some physical copies available, but they might not last long, so I would urge you to go check it out or even just get the physical version, the uh, digital version as well. Also, this week we got the release of Roll for Clues from Adam Vaz and the World Chef Games. It is a single session investigative game for two to five players where they investigate a missing person that was close to you, a loved one even, and the authorities are not giving a damn. Just take care to not go too deep into the investigation. We have this week a release also by Roll Flip Draw that is off the rails. It is a gemless game for three to six players playing with only one die, a deck of playing cards and sessions that might last 60 to 90 minutes, something like that. Of the Rails is a completely made up or forgotten sitcom from the 70s about ridiculous antics and hijinks of the staff on a passenger train. The players are led to be the lead characters and they will have plenty of improbable problems to try and deal with while still trying to avoid uh, the train going off rails. On Gems. The first one I will be mentioning this month is the TTRPG Accessibility Drive 2022. The gem will roll up for until January 1st, 2023, or like December 31st, it depends on your time zone. So we have something like eight to, eight to nine months to be part of it. The gem brings the idea to encourage tabletop RPG creators and publishers to revisit their previous released titles and update them or release new versions incorporating some accessibility in their designs. We know that there isn't like one single version of a document that will be accessible for everyone. So the idea during the jam is having options and informing players that these options are available. It even provides some guides to assist anyone interested in making their documents more accessible. It is specifically for games that are updated or have a new version created during the jam in order to incorporate more accessible documents. So previous releases titles are okay as long as they have a new 
version being released during the jam with more accessibility or more which is more accessible okay bear that in mind the second jam that i want to mention is the caltrop jam 2 you can not fail the, this jam will run up until the end of april and the rules are simple make a caltrop game they provide the caltrop srd the system reference document for you to use in creating the game and one thing that uh, takes this gem apart from the others is uh, that it also proposes a micro grant. There are some requirements to be met if you want to benefit from the micro grant, which just seems fair. So check it out, as it is something that really takes, uh, that differs from the regular gems proposing only that you create something uh, using a particular SRD or game license, which usually just serve as purpose to like public for get more publicity on the ga the game itself. On Caltrop, it is a game system based on the D4, and it is really an introductory game design or game system, which is great if this is your first time trying to hack a game. It was even featured on Dicebreaker's article on late 2021 as one of the tabletop RPGs to hack. And on articles, or threads, basically, this week I mentioned Ages of Life by Ben. Ben studied the way that some games deal with age, not aging itself, more the starting age of the characters, and proposes a new way to handle it. It is an interesting read where it goes from some of the experiences of aging down and go just down to the proposing of a new system. Good food for thought, at least, and it brings an interesting analysis of how other systems dealt with age and the impact that it had on the character creation. Okay, for today, I believe that's it. If you like the video, like them video, share, subscribe, you know how internet works. Let me know in the comments what you are liking about the series, what you are disliking about it, uh, about the episode. And you can pay me a coffee and coffee, you can buy my games on itch.io. And I will see you all in my next video. So, see ya!